This is part two of a two-part series all about picking livestock for your homestead to feed your family. In part one of this series, we focused on livestock for homesteaders who are focused on self-sufficiency, not being dependent on outside sources for materials for their homestead. For those of us who are okay with going to the store and buying feed or getting an AI tech to the farm to inseminate cows, this is part two a few more animals you're going to want on your homestead that will help feed your family. They just require a few more inputs. Now we do not homestead to prep for the end of the world. We homestead to feed our family the best quality food that we can. And we know the best way to do that is to raise it right here. So if you're homesteading more focused on that kind of self-sufficiency, taking control of your food chain, uh, knowing what you're putting on your family's table, but you're not worried about buying hay, buying some feed, having an AI guy come and service your cows. Uh, I'm gonna add a few to this list. This is option B for those of us who are a bit more modern homesteaders. You'll notice I left a couple very key animals out of my last list, and they're probably not too happy about being left off the list. So let's talk about option B, what I would suggest for a family, large family homesteading, trying to feed themselves, uh, but not, not worried about using a few more outside inputs. I didn't put cows on the self-sufficient, end of the world, prepper homesteader list. And it was, I'll be honest, I, I didn't put it on that list for a few reasons. First off, Evie mentioned she had a large family and if you're gonna to be totally self-sufficient, that means you have to have your own breeding stock on your homestead. A bull would be included in that mix. So you'd have cows and uh, at least one bull. As you, we've talked about before, before, bulls can be dangerous. Evie has a large family or is planning on a large family. I don't feel like I would suggest anybody with no experience around large livestock like cows I would never suggest that you get a bull, and so I could not suggest it to you as a self-sufficient answer to your problem because without a bull, your herd of cows is not self-sufficient. Immediately, you need an outside source. It could be a farmer down the road, and if that's cool with you, great, because cows should definitely be on a self-sufficient homestead. They turn grass into milk, into butter, cream, ice cream, cheese cows are incredible and lots of 1800s homesteaders would have a family cow because they could get so much from this one animal now there is something a little scary about that you do have a lot of eggs in one basket one of the reasons it's nice to have a bunch of goats for your milk and your cheese and meat is because if one dies well you know you probably have a bunch of other goats if one cow dies it is a huge loss so for again the prepper minded self-sufficient person I didn't suggest cows but if you're okay with having an AI tech come and breed your cows for you and if you're okay with purchasing some hay in the wintertime because they need a lot of hay in the wintertime Yeah, cows can turn grass into everything delicious. And you only really need one cow and one calf. Like you see, for a family of our size, we get plenty of milk from Ladybug. A bigger family could just get a bigger cow. Ladybug gives us about a gallon a day at her peak. If we were not calf sharing, we could probably get two gallons a day uh, at her peak. With the two here, Eventually we'll have two cows and we'll breed both of them from them We could get lots of meat and milk if we wanted to uh, So the options from a cow are kind of just I mean There's so much you can get from a cow and they can get so much from grass We do supplement their diet when we're milking them with some grain But these cows have not eaten grain since we stopped milking and They do need hay in the winter time. So that's one of those areas you need some outside inputs to make sure you're feeding your animals through the hard times of the year but awesome animal and One cow and a calf would really do a large family one cow two cows at most and Just go with AI as we show in our videos. You don't have to worry about a bull
The last animal that I didn't have on my end of the world prepper list, but which I think any modern homesteader should have on their homestead to be self-sufficient to produce your own food is pigs. Now I know I'm kind of a hypocrite here because, I don't know, do you see any pigs? I don't see any pigs. I don't have pigs right now. I'll get to that in a second, but you should have pigs if you want to feed your family. I always suggest homesteaders do feeder pigs. Raising pigs, breeding pigs, gestating pigs, it's all a lot of work. There is a lot that goes into it. If you've never had a pig before, do not start by breeding your own. If you've never had a pig before, just buy two feeders. From those two feeders, in just like five or six months, you can get 200 pounds hanging weight on each pig. Good quality feed, you can get closer to 300 pounds. So for a large family, imagine putting, you know, from that hanging weight, you're gonna get somewhere between 50 to 70% of that hanging weight actually in the freezer. So we're talking two to 300 pounds of meat in the freezer from your family, from just two pigs. I didn't have them on that end of the world you know, prepper list because if you're gonna be self-sufficient, again, you have to breed and breeding pigs is a lot of work and I do not suggest that for new homesteaders. Plus, pigs eat a ton and like our chickens, pigs are not ruminants. Ruminant systems are designed to turn hay or grass into milk and meat, the products that they produce. Pigs are not ruminants, so they can't just eat a bunch of grass and develop meat and milk. You're not gonna get that from a pig. So when you're looking for a totally self-sufficient homestead, you'll, you will put lots and lots of feed into a pig. That requires you going out and buying that feed or growing it, grinding it, milling it, and feeding it to your pigs. I have heard of farms and homesteads who do it, who grow all their own pig feed and feed their pigs with it. But again, it requires tractors and feed mills, grinders, mixers, all this stuff that most of you probably don't have and will never have. So for the total self-sufficient guy, pigs are not great. But if you're just a modern homesteader like me who wants to feed your family, put food on the table that you know where it came from and you don't mind buying some feed from your local feed mill, especially a locally produced feed because people do produce feed locally in a lot of places, uh, the pigs are a great option to put a ton of meat on the table and a ton of milk in your refrigerator. No, I'm just kidding, you, you're not gonna milk your pigs. But they do produce milk, don't forget, they're mammals. But yeah, you're not gonna be drinking that pig milk. They are not gonna let you. <laughs> pig milk is probably the best tasting milk out there. Just no human has been able to like, get under there and... Have you tasted pig milk? Comment below if you have. What's it taste like? Speaking of milk and pigs, pigs can be fed milk. And if you're looking to be more self-sufficient with raising pigs, one of the things you can do is own a cow and then take the cow milk, feed it to the pigs. You could separate the whey and feed that to the pigs. That is what some people do to be more self-sufficient with pigs. Totally an option, just not likely that most homesteaders will be producing so much milk for not only their large family of six to 10 people, but also enough to produce two large meat pigs off of. If you're a farmer with a big herd of cows, sure, but if you're just a homesteader with one or two small sized dairy cows, probably not gonna have enough extra milk. Definitely not from a couple goats uh, to grow pigs self-sufficiently. So again, great option to feed your family, but if you're prepping for the end of the world, instead of pigs, you're gonna just, you know, get yourself a rifle and go hunting and shoot a wild boar. There, there's how you get your pork self-sufficiently. How many pigs for a large family? We always raise two for our family of six. We, if you have a family of six, two is plenty. You could always go to three pigs if you had a bit larger of a family. From that, you'll get a ton of delicious, amazing meat in your freezer. So, great, great addition. The next animal on the list that every self-sufficient homestead will want to have is alpacas. I'm kidding. No homestead should have alpacas, ever. There's no point to alpacas. <laughs> See what can happen. 
have whatever they want. Two pregnant girls. Oh, Lunar. So, if you're wondering, like, uh, user, or not user, commenter, let's see here. Master Segway, Aust, really nailing it today. So, if you're wondering, you look at our homestead, you don't see any pigs. I brag about how pigs are so great. Why don't we have any? Maybe you're wondering that like, man, here I go with the segue again. So if you're wondering like Muggsy was, when are you raising pigs again? I apologize if you already answered it in previous videos. No worries, Muggsy. Uh, I really, really want to do pigs again this year. We did not do pigs last year because we knew we were moving. We had a lot of pork from years and years of running a pork business in Connecticut. And our freezers were full, were full of pork. We knew moving pigs would be a nightmare. So we decided no pigs last year. That means I have gone a full calendar year plus without pigs. Pigs are my favorite homesteading animal. They are my favorite farm animal to have uh, other than my dogs. I just, pigs make me so happy. Why do, why do we not have pigs yet? I don't have the infrastructure ready. And I have a very strict rule now. Don't get the animals if the infrastructure is not ready. So, as many of you know, we have a baby coming soon. If I can find enough time to get the infrastructure done before the baby shows up and it's all ready to go, then we probably will be getting pigs this year. And if I don't get the infrastructure ready, if it's not all complete in time for pigs, then they will be next year. So, I don't know, don't have a positive answer for you there, Muggsy. But eventually there will be pigs again on this homestead. And speaking of not only pigs, Zane wanted to know, are you all going to get any other types of livestock? Yes, Zane, we are definitely going to keep getting different livestock. Every couple of years we get something new and experiment with something. This last year or two, we got into the cows, we got back into goats. Right now we are very focused on milk and dairy, cheese. You'll notice we don't have any meat production other than the byproduct of, of having a bull calf or you know a couple extra roosters uh, but in the future upcoming livestock that we probably will be getting within the next year or two here that you'll see on the channel we have talked often about doing quail every couple years we bring it back up again just to try it just to do the quail experience same with meat rabbits we get asked a ton about meat rabbits and i would like to try it pigs will definitely be coming back to this homestead hopefully sooner than later. Other than those three things, uh, my daughter has hopes of getting a donkey one day. Maybe you'll see a donkey, I'm not sure. My other daughter really wants a pony, so will we ever have horses? Don't know. There are no immediate plans for new livestock as we have a new human being gonna be joining us shortly, and that's enough work in itself. This year we're gonna keep up with what we're doing here the additional human being and a couple new dairy animals as our cows calve and hopefully our goats which you'll find out next week we'll get the results back from our goat pregnancy test you'll find out whether or not the goats are pregnant or not that's it for ask home study today shouldn't say that's it that was a pretty long one don't forget, if you want to get a question answered, all you have to do is put the hashtag one word Ask Homesteady in your question on one of this week's upcoming videos. That way we find it. If we don't cover it in the weekly one we do at the end of the month, we'll do a lightning round and hopefully get to everybody's. And if you love Homesteady, you love Ask Homesteady and the fact that we take a whole day to just answer your questions, consider becoming a Homesteady pioneer. Click there, click there. It's five bucks a month. It comes out to about a quarter per episode. You get tons of bonus content, classes, members only podcasts, discounts on homesteading stuff that you buy. You can learn more by watching that video. Thank you for your support.